Show your size of that. I need to hit the If I could call order. Prayer, Councilwoman Thompson, followed by Pledge of Allegiance. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Dear wise and loving Father, thank you on behalf of all those who are gathered here today. We pray for this assembled council. I'm asking that you would graciously grant us a sense of the welfare and true needs of our people, confidence in what is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is an honest disagreement. I pray for the agenda set before us today. Please give an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in Eddystone. Also, we ask your blessing upon all who suffer from addiction. Strengthen them to reach out for help. Enable them to take the first step to recovery and give courage and hope to their families in the power of your love. Bless our small town of Eddystone and the residents who call it home. In your most blessed name, we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance. Sente, roll call, please. Mayor Reeves. Here. Ms. Thompson. Here. Ms. Tashier. Here. Ms. Reeves. Here. Mr. Patterson. Here. Ms. Gross. Mr. Dunio. Here. President Stewart. Here. For a quick announcement, we did hold an executive session uh, prior to this evening's regular meeting. The purpose of the executive session was to discuss litigation and personnel issues. Presentation. Our council would like to welcome from Boy, Boy Scout Troop Number 52, Mr. Gabe Noel. 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 I <laughs> Gabe, Gabe has come forward to council uh, to earn his arrow of light to graduate into the Boy Scouts, correct? And his community project that he's identified is to do an education outreach for our single stream re recycling program. So I will turn the floor over to Gabe. Hi, my name is Gabe. I'm a Cub Scout from PAC 52. I'm required to participate in a community project to receive my Arrow Flight Badge. I'm here today to seek support and guidance from the council on my plan to educate the residents on recycling program. My plan is to travel around town handing out flyers and stickers, explain proper ways to recycle, and explain the benefits for the environment and community. For example, recycling saves natural resources and energy, and it reduces waste disposal costs and generates additional income. I've noticed in our home we have more recycled trash than solid waste trash. I really want the recycling program to stay because it creates and keeps jobs and builds a community where people work together. Dave, as I had explained to your mother and yourself prior to the meeting, uh, what Borough Council is asking you to do is with definitely with adult supervision, uh, as you greet our neighbors throughout town to explain the recycling program if they are willing to participate. We have stickers and also information flyers to help you give the education to the community. Um, right now we are averaging just over five tons a month and what we're hoping is with your efforts that we would be able to get up to our 20% goal so if we can get 10 to 15 tons per month based on your efforts, you'd be serving the community very well. So we appreciate you. And we will send this to Mom. <laughs> would, you, um, would you be willing to come back at next council meeting um, yeah. and give us an update on your progress? Yeah. Okay. And Thank I will you. give you my name and address and come up with it. Thank you. Our next uh, presentation is the Eddystone Drug Awareness 
uh, poster contest. Danielle, if you'd like to say a few words about. Uh, we had a, uh, we put the initiative out. We had a huge turnout, as you can see from the posters around the room. Uh, we had about uh, 32 participants. Uh, everyone, I was surprised um, how knowledgeable some of the kids are, and I think that's wonderful. Um, knowledge is power. Um, and uh, we invited Jack Whalen here tonight uh, to present the awards and recognize our participants. Um, Jack, do you want to come up? Sure. Want me to mispronounce everybody's name like I usually do? <laughs> that's what you want to do. Can you hold that yes, there? We wanted to take an opportunity to recognize everybody that participated in the poster contest. Uh, Councilwoman Thompson, when she brought the idea forward uh, to Borough Council, uh, you know, wanted to make sure that everybody had, you know, not only um, the education that you gave yourself about the evils of drug use uh, through making the poster contest, but she also uh, ordered Sonny's story, uh, a copy of the book for everybody who did participate. Can you can you give us a little bit about what Sonny's story is all about? Sure. Uh, Sonny's story is written by Ginger Katz, and uh, her son uh, did pass away from overdosing on drugs. Uh, the story is told through the dog's eyes. Uh, but it's a good story for everyone to read, even adults. It's from kindergarten on up. Um, I did read it. Uh, it's, uh, the author is very friendly. If you have any questions, you can email the author. She'd be more than happy to email you back. Uh, she likes to communicate with anyone who has questions uh, or who needs some direction. So she already emailed me and asked me to send some pictures of uh, the events and the posters so she can uh, include them on her website. So I'm going to call forward all the participants in the, in the, in the poster contest. If you could come forward and stay forward uh, until we finish reading all the names, uh, we'll give one good round of applause to everybody after we read the names, uh, and then we'll announce the winners. The winners are receiving a twenty-five-dollar $25. gift card, and a winner would be from the K to three, from four to six, and from grade seven to nine. So is uh, Joel Lynn Calderon here? Jojo. Julia Doyle. Elizabeth Good. Good. Terry Jones. Rissa Ray. Canero. Thank you. <laughs> Judah Miller. Angelo Neves, Emilio Neves, Brianna Palladino, Nicholas Quinn, Marissa Richards, Nathan Rickards, Jayona Smith, Cassidy Starr, Nicholas Tanuni, <coughs> Donovan Washington, and they're all the participants from grades kindergarten through third grade. For grade <laughs> for grades four to six, Hannah Barnes, <laughs> Jacob Bradshaw. Jordan Goldheim, Julia Goldheim, Haley Groy, Groy, Ashante Goodrich, Alyssa Hastings, Caitlin Kozlowski. Ty Miller, Alana Staninskis, Skylar Thompson, 
And those are the folks that participated in the fourth to sixth grade. Seven to nine grades. Summer McBride. And Nissa Miller. Heather Newton. Ryan Quinn. And Emily Stewart. I have somebody take one photo and we can grab, gather everybody around with the district attorney and Councilwoman Thompson. Seven and nine, Heather Newton. Wow. District Attorney Wellen, would you like to say a few sure. words? Absolutely. First and foremost, it's an honor for me to be back in Eddystone Borough again. I certainly uh, was here for 20 years, two and a half years ago, and I miss it. And I, I you know, every every day um, that goes by, I always say that uh, Eddie Stone was such a great community when I was here. It continues to be an awesome community that I'm so proud of uh, now that I serve on the county level. And I just want to say to the kids out there in regard to these posters, your posters are great and, and what the message is is so important because in my office sometimes we see a lot of bad things and bad things happen to kids that, that use drugs and bad things happen to adults that use drugs. So we want to make sure that the message that we have in our community is that drugs are really, really bad for you. Controlled substances or illegal drugs are really bad. And we see that every day. And some kids and some adults, they go to jail for using drugs. And unfortunately, some kids and some adults, they die from using drugs. So we don't want anyone to go to jail. We don't want anyone to die. And so the message that you're sending right now to your friends, to your family, is really, really important. So I'm really proud of you for all of these posters. And I congratulate the winners and everybody that took the time just to draw the posters and create the message that's so important today. So thank you again for inviting me. Danielle, I, you know, certainly applaud you for the efforts of, you know, making sure that the kids were uh, supplied with uh, poster boards and markers and crayons and colored pencils and the encouragement uh, that you gave. Uh, the participation was overwhelming. Uh, the message and, and the folks from the council took an opportunity uh, to look at each and every one of the posters and, you know, the message was clear that uh, our youth, uh, understand the evils of, of drug use and it's reassuring uh, that we're getting the message out early. I uh, want to certainly thank uh, District Attorney Jack Wellen. You've got a busy, busy, busy schedule and to take uh, the time to come and present to, to our children of Eddie Stone uh, their books and their certificates for appreciation and the, and the words that uh, you've provided is greatly appreciated. Um, W. Stewart at eddystoneborough.com or dot org. If, if I could have uh, those who were snapping pictures, uh, please uh, send the photos to me at wstewart at eddystoneborough.org. Uh, we'll certainly uh, 
uh, be trying to do this on a yearly basis. So, Danielle, anything that I'm missing? No, thank you, everyone. It was a great turnout. Thank you very much. Other members of council, uh, we're going to take a five-minute recess, but I do want to give you an opportunity if you wanted to say a few words about the, the, the poster contest. <clears throat> Mr. Donahue? That's, I looked at everyone over last week, and they were all good. And like they said, it shows that the young youth knows what's going on, which is good. Councilman Patterson? i just like to say, great job with all the students. And the great job with all uh, Vice President Reeves. Uh, yes, I'd just like to say that Council walked around the room and put our voted on, voted on what we thought was which child put the most effort in. And just want to congratulate everyone. Nice work, Daniel. Thanks, Carol. Council Wong Tadisher. Just uh, congratulations to every child that participated. You did a wonderful job. It was hard to pick winners because you're all winners for taking part. And thank you to Danielle for doing this, and thank you to DA Jack Whalen for coming. We appreciate you being here, too. Thank you. Mayor Reese? Uh, yes, I want to thank all the kids for uh, the nice posters. They were very, very well done, and congratulate all everybody who participated and the winners. A lot of job well done, and thank you, Mr. Whalen, for showing up to our presenter. Thank you. Right, good job, Danielle. Thanks. Thank you, Chief Pacheski. Hopefully your job's going to get a little bit easier. Now that we've got an education of our youth on the, on the use of drugs, but just a few words. Yes, we have a very knowledgeable youth, and I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to make the posters. Thank you, thank you very much. Yay. And we also want to, you know, thank you for, you know, will be willing to go through the community and get the education on the on the recycling and. Uh, I'm going to jot down my information for you to have so that you'll be able to contact me uh, during the course of your project over the next month. And I'm certainly inviting you back to our June meeting so you can give us a recap. Okay. Dave, also, if you need any help from any of the council members, please feel free to contact us, okay? We'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you. You're welcome. Five minute recess. If we go back on the record. Public Forum, Harry McAlpin. <coughs> Sir, if you can come forward, um, just give us your address. Sure. Thanks. My name is Harry McAlpin. I live at 9, uh, 1199 East 9th Street, Eddie Stone Pa. And I'm sure most people here know me. Um, I just wanted to bring up the fact that this is the 10-year anniversary that my sidewalk was damaged by PICO through utility line services. They hired a contractor out of Conshohocken, and uh, they put in a gas line, a gas main from Woodland all the way down Bowlands Lane, all the way up Eddystone Avenue, and they went to my house, and they crossed uh, Eddystone Avenue at my house. They left that trench open all winter long from 2003 to 2004. Mrs. Berry was the... Uh, Crossing guard, thank you, at the time. And she said to me, yeah, you better watch that sidewalk because it had rained like really bad on one of the winter days. And I said, ah, eh, they'll take care of it. I worked for cable my entire life. And I figured, you know, we're held responsible for any construction we do. We fix it. We make good on it. They'll do the same. They didn't. I've been here m numerous times throughout the 20 years that I've lived here. And, I haven't uh, heard from you, so I thought it was all resigned. Nah, never been. And I had two PICO guys come out and give me their card, shake my hand, tell me we'll take care of it, and nothing's ever been done. But I just wanted to bring that to light because it seems like it just disappeared and vanished into the wilderness. Well, the sad part is, I mean, if you ever go to move, you're going to have right. to have it Oh, fixed. I'm responsible for it. Right. right. And that's <laughs> another thing I'd like to bring up. All the residents of Eddystone are now being held responsible for their curb and their sidewalk. Now, I can understand the sidewalk to a degree, but the curb, I mean, when I bought my house, that curb was pretty much just like it is today. Nobody said anything to uh, Shelly Lavin when she was selling it to me. Now I'm responsible. That's a little shady. You know, 
there's got to be some kind of common ground here. You know, I watched my uh, sister owned a house on 13th Street with her husband, and uh, they were a deaf couple. They weren't making ends meet. They ended up having to sell. They were foreclosing on it. Well, they, they took every last penny they had to pay for that sidewalk. That's sad. That's sad. And I watched it. Now, I'm not trying to reprimand or, or belittle anyone here. We're all living in Eddie Stone, doing the best we can. But come on. I, I called Horn when he was in charge. Now I think it's Mr. <coughs> Walters or Dallas. But when this was going on with my sidewalk, he didn't even know construction was happening. I said, there's a major pipeline being put in the ground from Woodland through Eddie Stone. What construction? <laughs> Well, it was amusing, I mean, to say the least. Now it's not so amusing. It's 10 years. Have you continued to uh, oh, PICO? Because I, oh, I had a problem with uh, some My son works for PICO. Bricks that were pulled out by a line yeah, the mount, the yeah. street. And I had to keep after them. I finally fixed it. No, I kept after them. And even Jack Whalen, that was just here, he, he actually uh, sent some legal paperwork to Pico and everything. It just so I figured I'd bring it bring it up. Also the new firehouse, now that it's up and running, it's beautiful. I love it. But now I'm getting some like serious emergency traffic passing by my house. Which is great. I mean that's fine. My gas meter is on the side of my house and it's completely like vulnerable. If one of these emergency vehicles get T boned it's not going to be nothing. So we may want to look at putting up some kind of concrete poles, steel poles filled with concrete. And the rigs that are going by, too, the rigs are tearing up my sidewalk and my curb. They, they're not making the turn. As a matter of fact, they hit the light. Complaint. We had a complaint on that tonight, Aaron. Yeah, they hit the light on the side of my house. And I hate, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, yeah, man, these are things that need to be addressed before something happens. Right. You know, and... If litigation occurs because of the sidewalk, I'm just going to say, hey, I've been here for 20 years, and this has been here for 10 years, and I've been telling them. And Did you keep all your information? All your yeah, I have. Uh, copies of everything? <coughs> yes, I do. Tim, can you look into that? Actually, would you mind bringing like a picture or two up? Because Pico has a liaison. He was just in here for other stuff, and I'll be glad to call him for you. But if Tina's here during the, like, the, this is the like a picture of this is the damage, and I'll call them for you for sure. My name's Ralphie. They call them like the community liaison, and they have a number of projects going on in town. And I'll right. be glad to bring it up. And say this this gentleman's been calling for a long time. Yeah, like I said, I've I've actually had their representatives come to my house yeah, multiple I, times, and they shook my hand. We'll take care thing, of it. Yeah. Not a problem. But yeah. I'll try. I mean, I would try. But it would be helpful if you just give me a picture because I have your at uh, your eleven ninety nine East Ninth. Mm -hmm. The corner house. Yeah, if you get a chance, like during business hours, pop them up to Tina, and then uh, I'll see if I can do anything. Simple. Um, do you have a contact for Tina? Uh, if the bar, if you just come here to the borough hall, okay. Tina's the secretary, 8.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. You want the email the picture to me? Well, I... I'll, oh, you want to just email them? Oh, yeah, I can email them or text them. It's that simple. I just go home and take a picture okay. of them. And yeah, I'll write down my... You can text them. <laughs> I'll just take them. I'll, I'll write down my name and myself and text them to me. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Hopefully I can do something, Harry, but I mean, I'll definitely try. All right. Right. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I apologize, Harry. I thought that I was... Just don't true. apologize. I mean, just... No, you brought it up before to us in the past, uh, and I thought but, it was fixed, too, because we hadn't seen you, and you had said that you came to you and, you know, said they were going to make good on it. Well, Kevin, and I hate to even bring Kevin's name up, but just before his passing, he was... Um, before he left council, he was saying, I, I'll take care of it. I'm going to look into it, you know, and, and then he passed away. I was a light. Retired from council and then passed away. I was like, oh my god. So, and, and tonight really isn't the best night for me to even be here bringing this up after all the no, 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 beautiful it's stuff That's you guys did. That's why we're here, Harry. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Appreciate it. All right, Harry. Thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Harry. Yeah. Thank you. Anthony Tinney. <clears throat> I live at 907 Civil Avenue. Yes, sir. Okay. 
I uh, had a little problem with an incident with an officer a couple months back. I uh, talked to uh, Acting Chief Chesky about it. Uh, he said he could handle it about a job I was applying for. I went down and spoke to the owner of this business again, and they said that they could not hire me because now another officer, or I don't know if it's the same officer or another officer, said, you know, I'm doing stuff, and uh, I was not to be hired in this town. So I just wanted to bring up the love of everybody and bring back to Eddie, uh, Acting Chief Nashewski, and see where we can go from there. See if anything was actually done to this officer or if I don't. Mr. President, I did speak to Mr. Tinney, Mr. Tinney thought that one of the officers was talking to a gentleman who was trying to get the towing job here, who uh, said that he would be hiring a tow truck driver um, if the need arise if he had to do police towing. Mr. Tinney apparently is trying to apply for that position. Uh, Mr. Tinney said one of the officers uh, didn't speak highly of him. But I told Mr. Tinney that any businessman who owns their own business makes their own decision for employing, hiring, firing, it's not a police officer, it's not for a council, it's a private business. And that's a discussion that we had. Yeah. That's a discussion we had, but I guess from going back again, he said, you know, he just said to me the other day, you know, officers of this borough said such and such that I'm in the wrong places where I shouldn't be, you know, something like that. i tell you what, Mr. Tinney, if you would like, uh, we'll set up a meeting between yourself, me, and the uh, owner. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Neary. Hey, twelve thirty-two East Thirteenth. Um, I talked to Mr. Donahue earlier. Chief Reeves at the break. Um, there's been a lot, a lot of tractor trailer traffic through the borough. Um, just earlier this evening. I'm coming up Eddie Stone Avenue at 9th Street, right at Mr. McGallop's house. I have to stop halfway down the block so this guy can make a right off of 9th on Eddie Stone Avenue coming over that bridge, which is a uh, how many ton bridge? I know it's not 40 tons. You know what I mean? He's coming over a 9th Street bridge. I sit on my deck. I watch him go down Eddie Stone Avenue all the time. Um, a couple months ago, before the election, I approached Mayor Orr, who was a tractor trailer making a left turn from 11th Street onto Eddie Stone Avenue. Now, we just had a room full of kids, right? Everyone said how, how good they did with all this. Every one of them has a scooter. Every one of them has a bicycle. Every one of them has inline blades. One of these kids is going to pop out between the car. The truck's going to take them out. It's going to be too late. I want to relate a story. I relate it to Mr. Donahue. When I was in junior high school, and 95 ended right here, <laughs> Sellers Avenue, they used to get off of 95, they would go up just to Pike to Sellers Avenue, they would cut down Sellers Avenue, and they would get on 291. Well, the paper boy got killed. I just don't want that to happen here. I mean, it's, we, the signs I, I see at the end of the street on Chester Pike are kind of faded. We need new signs. Mr. Dunhu said that's been addressed. Great, but we need to crack one. I drove a truck for a lot of years. The worst thing you want to see is that guy. You know what I mean? Because I talked to Al about getting some guys in coveralls and a creeper. You start going over their trucks, they're going to stop coming through town because it's going to cost them money. And if it costs them money, time is money for them guys. If they have to sit coming out of pet terminals for three hours while he goes over their truck, that's all money out of their pocket. So something has to be addressed there. Um, I know I talked to Mayor Reeves, Mr. Dunno. I appreciate, but this is everyone's getting out of school. I don't even have little kids. You know what I mean? But the truck traffic is just too much. Mm -hmm. It's just too much. It's got to stop. It's got to start costing them money. And I don't know. It used to be when you went over a, an overweight bridge. 9th Street. It used to be a flat rate and then $2 a pound over. Am I right? Because uh, they used to do it in Darby Borough, Springfield Road, that bridge right down there. People didn't even know it was a bridge. And they would go over that and they would get them all the time because I got fined here. I, I, I'm telling you the truth. 
you can generate some money for your borough, and you can keep the kids safe. That's all I'm saying. We, um, we actually spoke prior to the meeting. Uh, uh, yeah, because I, I was hot. I had just ran into the truck mm -hmm. by Mr. Uh, Galpin's house, and I, was, I came here looking for a cop. And I ran into Bob, and he, he took the rest. Thanks, Bob. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, May Mayor Reese and Councilman Donahue have brought it to the, to the I, I sat on my deck a million times and said, I got to I gotta bitch about this. I got to bitch about this. I gotta. And I'm, I'm glad I picked tonight with all the kids. But it's, we need, it's something that needs to be addressed. Thank there's, you for bringing it to our uh, question, Jamie. I believe there's two things that we're able to do. Is, is that uh, the, the mayor believes that one of the signs directing traffic to 13 uh, coming from Chester towards Eddystone is right. missing. Uh, so we're going to be contacting PennDOT to make sure that that directional sign, making sure traffic to trailer traffic stays uh, on Chester Pike, right. uh, is addressed. Um, also, uh, you are absolutely correct that the no truck signs uh, that are on Eddystone Avenue, as well as Seville Avenue, as well as on Simpson Street, are faded. Uh, I can have Gene Scott, our highway superintendent, renew those signs. In fact, that's one of the initiatives that we have as, as the highway committee, is just to go through the town and make sure that all the signs are upgraded, because we also have the same problem with the no parking from here to corner signs, right. as well as the stop signs. Right. So, so there is going to be an effort through the summer months uh, to make sure that the signage is renewed. Uh, we also spoke last meeting with uh, our borough engineer, Mr. Catania, uh, to take a look at the striping that we've got in the town. So uh, one of the things that we're looking to do is, is that right now you've got the two parallel lines for a crosswalk. Right. Uh, when you go to, let's say, up to the city of Philadelphia, you see what they call piano keys, right. which, are the, which are the teeth. It's a crosswalk. And it gives you, it gives you that... Right appearance that you know that there's you know somebody that's going to potentially cross there uh, so so we're looking at, at making those changes here in a borough so uh, your, your, your concern will absolutely be addressed correct me if I'm wrong acting chief Pachesky but we do not have a truck enforcement unit simply because the signage prohibits trucks so I don't, I don't see a, a need to try to start a truck enforcement unit I, I believe the needs going to be is just to Make sure we take the proactive uh, steps to keep the trucks out of town. I think we can curb the, the truck traffic with more traffic enforcement in that area. The other thing we can check too is that we had a problem a few years ago where PennDOT was uh, handling shipping routes and they had it messed up and they had cars going down Eddystone Avenue instead of down the ground like they're supposed to. That's what I figured. Somebody's on a GPS. Right. You know, he's looking for the shortest point from A to yeah. B. Um, but as yep. I understand it before, the problem was when they're on these routes, and you as a truck driver may know, is if they're doing a certain shipment, they have to stay on that route. So if they're off that route, right. they can right. Oversized right. loads. Right. Pass down the That's certain what we're route. having problems with before, and I can make sure that them routes are correct also. You might want to fill up a weight restriction on 9th Street. Yeah, we did uh, have a... Uh, I, I don't know what the weight it is on a bridge. I guarantee it's not 40 tons. Though. We did have guys that were certified to weight trucks and stuff like that there. We had one time... We were taking them down the Penn Terminals to weigh them and or bring the uh, state police uh, weight team in. Right. With the, the uh, supportable the, scales. Yes. Then they're done. Uh, mm -hmm. um, since I'm the last guy, I want to get my money's worth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my friend lives on 8th Street, um, the borough yard. Uh, again, it's something I talked to the mayor about earlier. Um, you built a nice firehouse with a nice white fence, right? So everybody who parks at the firehouse gets to look at nice, but the people who live there get to look at the pile of metal recycling, the old tractor trailer, the piece of junk, old barn. The you carport know? that was converted into a salt barn. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, <laughs> yeah. but it's ugly. Um, <laughs> yo, that white <laughs> fence would go a long way, I mean, to, to make your, your people on H3 happy. And, and again, on the last rainstorm, we got sewage. Too. There was sewage on A Street again after the check valve was put in. I don't know if this is the first one. Just wanted to kind of make you aware of it, but uh, it's not pretty. Mm -hmm. We have issues at the highway department with the, with the facility itself. There's been discussions about uh, how we would be able to beautify the area, um, the, what I call the hut 
which is the, the, the building or the right. shed where they report to in the morning. Uh, it's got animals crawling up in the rafters and, you know, it's just not a ideal situation and there has been discussions about, you know, the ways that we can upgrade uh, that facility. Uh, it's just a matter now of talking about uh, the finances of it. But uh, we uh, certainly can make sure that, uh, you know, during the summer months that we've got some people down there, there's, you know, it's just, a, it's just nothing. That's all. I mean, the, the, the salt shit. It's hard to polish it. Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess that's about it. I believe we do have an estimate for some white fence. Okay, cool. It's just a matter of making sure that we put the money, the money aside. To, mm -hmm. it's really not, I, I, Gene Scott got an estimate for me. I have it at home. Somewhere around wasn't bucks. cheap. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, really. It was somewhere around 100 bucks. No, no, no. That's, that's, per, that's per foot. No, 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 no. Total cost. That's what we gain. I have it written down. Okay. Maybe just leave. We'll take that deal. Yeah, we'll take that deal. Yeah, right. Take that one and run. Send them to my house. No, I know. It cost me a thousand bucks. And yeah. I'll be back in a couple months to talk about sound barriers. About what? Sound barriers. Sound barriers? Yes. How come everyone has them and we don't? I, I want to say, say this and then I'm going to walk away. A long time ago, when all that blue root and all got done, and uh, Clarence Bell was the senator, I know the borough petitioned him for sound barriers, and the response from PennDOT was, we don't build sound barriers on existing highways. Probably if you live in Swathmore, right? Or, or Ridley Park. Why not us? That's all I'll say. <laughs> hey, why not me? The what? Sure. Tell me, Taylor, eleven one four Eighth Street. Um, between Eighth Street and Ninth Street, there's that alley that backs up against um, the Sucre's property there. So there's. If you're on Eighth Street, there's the garages on this side, but then there's the garages here, and Guy's has his. Um, shop there. A lot of that wooden picket fence is missing and it's gone. Um, and there's a lot of unsavory characters that go down that alley at all hours is this on and Joe cut property? through there. Is it Joe Guy's property? Now I'm asking you that. Whose property uh, is that? Is that borough property uh, or is that his? Because it would be really nice if that fence could get replaced because, I again, I see property. all hours. I believe that's borough property. Okay, could could another Council fence be put yeah, there? Yeah, now let's take a look at it and give us a report back on the best way to secure the area. And I have seen little it. kids playing back there, and that's not safe either because mm -hmm. there's broken bottles, there's cinder blocks, and if we're talking about fences, we may as well just talk about that fence too. <laughs> okay. I can chief Machesky any incidents in that area that you can recall of. I can call them in if you want to get I mean, I just don't. I will make one last call for public forum. Anybody else for public forum? Mr. Wilson. Hi. If you don't mind, I'm going to stay where I am. <laughs> You're close enough. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I just wanted a question. First of all, one, I had two questions, and one of them had to do possibly with what this lady was just speaking about. That that area across toward the railroad tracks from the, the new firehouse, is that borough property, or is that that's private property, isn't Robert's it? Robert's Oxygen is at home today. Okay, so that, that whole parking lot there does not belong to the borough. That's, that's private property. Private Okay. So it's not a public street or anything. Okay. Uh, in terms of the, the trucks, I was just curious, because I, I know that there are trucks that go up and down Seville, like to the wine uh, distributor and stuff like that. And I assume that they're that that's legal, right? As long as they're making them legal, if they have a manifest for delivery. What's that? If they have a manifest okay. for yeah. delivery. You'll notice that truck sign when you've got the, 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 the truck yeah. with, the, with the red and the slash through it, the red circle and the slash through it, then there's a little supplementary placard underneath that yeah. says, except for local deliveries. I, I, I assume that that's, that's, that's legal. And then on, on Eddystone Avenue, 
I mean, I, I live on 11th, and I see trucks going down Eddy Stone Avenue, and there's nothing on Eddy well, there's hardly anything on Eddy Stone Avenue, and they could be making deliveries through with a, no, with a tractor nothing. trailer. They're going to the terminal, that's it. They're going to the bridge, uh -huh. that's all. So they, they shouldn't be going down there at all. Uh, and then, uh, what's the difference about Simpson Street? Uh, is that that's some place where you can park an oversized vehicle overnight or something like that? Yes, in the green area. Okay. Is that the only? Aren't, aren't there a couple of streets in town that are like that? Four Street. Seven Street. Seven Street. Ten Street. Okay. And, uh, and I believe you're allowed to park in the church parking lot too, right? Where that? Yes. The church parking lot. As long as it's not during church, you know where um, oh, the Lighthouse Hall is. Because huh. okay. we had we had an issue a couple of times about a, somebody parking a box truck, mm -hmm. you know, on Eleventh Street. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there's I think every street has at least. Okay, well, like for example, on Eleventh Street, there's there's no way that there's there, it's just illegal to park a box truck on Eleventh Street. There's no. Our course of action to go out on is the uh, site down to violation of our where it's on the parking, parking class, over class vehicle on the roadway, mm -hmm. parking on the stick, and we have to do the tickets out. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody there in a while. Uh, how about box trucks in residential parking lots and things like that? Can you... Yeah, you know, like if, if you if you have an alley, can you bo uh, park a box truck in your driveway? <coughs> I guess I guess if I guess if it fits, I mean it's private. It's your property. It's mm -hmm. private property. I thought there was some kind of a something about not being allowed to park large RVs in in uh, in your driveway, like if you were in an alley, something like that. I guess nobody knows about that. If you can fit it in there, it's, it's your property. You can build it. I think Mr. Wilson's talking about like a common alley where there's no exact parking designations, like mm -hmm. an open alley type of thing. Mm -hmm. I would say it would be okay as long as it's not blocking the fire lane because all the alleys in town are fire lanes, mm -hmm. and that it wouldn't be impeding other neighbors. If someone will have a complaint, we'll go down and look at it. And see okay, thank you. Anyone, Anyone else for public forum? If anybody has any, like, don't be afraid to call the police. If you have a complaint, you remain anonymous. It's the only way it gets documented. Correct, Ed? That is correct. I encourage anyone when they see any type of activity or something there's a question about, call 911. It gets logged, and the officer will make his way over to you and we'll get it on record. Mm -hmm. Not if it's anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I said, not if it's anonymous. Well, the, the call will be. With no more record. public forum. Uh, Mr. Vicente, can you present the Treasurer's report, please? Yes, sir. The balance of the general fund as of April 1st, 2014 was $285,418.12. We had an excess of uh, revenues over expenses in the amount of $133,270.68. We had payroll expenditures of $83,961.64. The balance of the general fund <coughs> Effective April 30th, 2014, is $334,727.16. $334, Council, is there any questions about the Treasurer's report? No. No questions. May I have a motion to accept? I make a motion to accept the Treasurer's report as read and make it permanent, part of the permanent minutes. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Cash receipts and disbursements, trail, please. I make a motion that all bills are paid, all money deposited once it's approved by each committee. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Presente, can you present the code enforcement report, please? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, April 16 inspections were performed. 30 work stop orders violations and or citations were issued, 43 work permits issued, 34 licenses were issued. The Coast Department had uh, income in the amount of $7,212.85. Council, 
Council, any questions regarding the code enforcement report? No. With no questions, may I have a motion to accept? Make a motion to accept the code enforcement report as read and made part of the permanent minutes. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Mr. Presente, may I have the police report? Yes, Mr. President. There were 491 calls for service, 162 citations issued, 13 accidents the police have dealt with in April, 28 <coughs> thefts reported, uh, parking citations for the month were three, and uh, the Eddystone Police made 36 criminal arrests in April. Council, any questions on the police report for the month of April 2014? Yes, I have, I have one. On the thefts, are they residential? Or is that uh, Walmart? Commercial. Commercial was 24, which is businesses, and four were uh, reported thefts of residential. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on the police report? With no questions, may I have a motion to accept the police report for April 2014, please? Make a motion to accept the police report as read and make a word of permanent minutes. I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Mr. Presente, may I have the fire report? Uh, yes, Mr. President. In April, there were 28 <coughs> alarms, 11 in the day, 17 at night, 333 uh, members responded. <coughs> Uh, also during the month of April, members of the fire company attended training on the foam trailer that was donated recently by the Eddystone Rail Company. This trailer will be stored at the firehouse uh, and it should be in service as we speak next week. The, uh, the borough will ensure the uh, trailer and get proper tags on it. Members also attended a training class on proper use of a what they call a gem tour harness. Members of Council, any questions on the fire report? With no questions, may I have a motion to accept the fire report for the month of April 2014, please? I make a motion to accept the fire report as read and made part of permanent minutes. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Presente, I see that you've got the <coughs> minutes for both the workshop and the regular meeting uh, for March. 2014. May I have a motion to accept the workshop meeting minutes from March 3rd, 2014, as well as the regular meeting minutes from March 10th, 2014. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for the workshop meeting on March 3rd, 2014, and the regular meeting for March 10th, 2014. Second. A motion uh, made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I also see that you've got the minutes for the workshop and regular meetings for the month of April 2014. May I please have a motion to approve the workshop meeting minutes for April 7th, 2014, as well as our regular meeting on April 14, 2014. Make a motion to accept and approve the minutes for the April 7th and April 14th, 2014 uh, minutes. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion carries. was present at the April 14th meeting. Yeah, she was <laughs> you weren't here, but you still her, her, her proof of being present was that not only did she give a presentation about the um, Women's History Month, uh, she also, her picture appeared on the front page of the town block, and she did provide <laughs> prayer that evening. So I think she's here. So I'll make that correction, and the correct version will appear on the official books of Eddie's. Okay. I believe Beth was here as well. 
I don't have as much proof that Beth was here, but I can prove that that's going to Yeah, Beth, this is the first meeting Beth Smith Yes. Sorry about that. Beth also. We were here in April now. You're absent too. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we just sure. didn't notice you. <laughs> <laughs> Set up in the corner where we can see. Yeah, <laughs> everybody who's here. We got to speak up when we're sitting here. There! Are you here literally or speak metaphorically? Let's, 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 let's back up. I, I would like to have a motion to accept the meeting minutes for April 14, 2004, with the following corrections being made that uh, Ms. Tadashore will be marked as being present, Ms. Gross will be marked as being present. And the Honorable Mayor Reeves will be marked as present. May I have a motion to accept with those corrections? So ordered. Council, you've had an opportunity to review the emergency services contribution agreement between the Eddystone Rail Company and Eddystone Borough. It's uh, essentially an agreement that uh, we would receive tag and ensure the foam trailer for fire suppression. Uh, council or uh, our legal council has recommended uh, acceptance, so I will entertain a motion to approve the emergency response contribution agreement between the Borough of Eddystone and the Eddystone Rail Company. Mr. Mr. President. Mr. President. Second. I have a motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Council at our workshop meeting, we reviewed the updated civil service rules and regulations. Uh, electronic copy was distributed to everybody last week. A final copy was presented to everybody for review prior to the meeting. And I'd like to have uh, accept the motion to approve the updated civil service rules and regulations. And that would be adopted the 12th of May, 2014. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the updated civil service rules and regulations. Second. Motion made and seconded to adopt the updated civil service rules and regulations <coughs> effective May 12, 2014. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Council, what we discussed at the workshop meeting last week uh, was Part of the update of the civil service rules included the promotional procedures for the positions of lieutenant as well as sergeant to provide rank within the uh, Eddystone Police Department. Uh, we will need to give approval to the Civil Service Commission uh, to advertise and begin the process for promotional examinations. So I'll entertain a motion to. Uh, for the Civil Service Commission to advertise for the promotional examinations for both sergeant and lieutenant. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion for the approval for the Civil Service Commission to advertise for promotional examination for sergeant and lieutenant. Second. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. As a sidebar, I believe that we could probably have testing start as early as June. Council, last meeting we discussed the summer schedule for workshop meetings. Karen, help me. We will we will not have workshops in June, June July, July, August, August and September. September. We will still have our we'll regular we'll, workshop meetings in October. We'll still have our regular meeting on the second Monday of every month, right. and we will have uh, scheduled executive sessions prior to the regular meeting. So, unless I, and if something comes up, we'll, we'll always have emergency meetings. Okay. So if I could have counsel, if I could have a motion. And dress down. Oh, let's not forget the dress down. Yes. <laughs> so important. It's important. I just said that was so important. So if I could have a motion for council to approve the adoption of the summer schedule, which includes dress down, <laughs> uh, which will eliminate the workshops in June, July, August, and September. 
make that motion, Mr. President, to approve the summer schedule with no workshop meetings, June, July, August, September, and dress down. Second. <laughs> motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Council, as we discussed during an executive session, uh, we are currently in a litigation matter with the former Chief of Police, Mr. William Connor. Um, there, as some at the council table perceive a potential conflict with one of the members of council, and uh, that prohibits us from discussing the litigation uh, during our executive session. At the advice of our labor council, uh, he suggested the council appoint a liaison that would be speaking directly with our labor council and it would be the liaison's responsibility to share any type of litigation strategy with the other members of council. Uh, if I could have a motion for the appointment of a liaison to discuss litigation matters concerning William Connor with our legal counsel, please. I'd like to make a motion have Bill Stewart be the liaison between council and um, our labor's uh, attorney. I'll second it. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can we have a roll call on that, please? <clears throat> Ms. Thompson? Abstain. Ms. Thatcher? Yes. Ms. Reeves? Mr. Stewart? Patterson? Yes. Uh, Mr. Donahue? Yes. President Stewart? Yes. Motion carried. Council, any other actions that need to be taken this evening formally? Yes. We need to hire somebody to clean the Lighthouse Hall and uh, the new firehouse. I can recommend uh, Amy Riley to clean the firehouse, the new firehouse, and I'd like to see Ann Jackie come back to clean Lighthouse Hall because we know she knew what she was doing and she did a fantastic job. Even her schedule, I mean, has she shown interest in doing that? Is contact her I did not get a chance to call her on the way home this evening. Um, I guess the first question would be how much would we be paying per hour and then uh, you know with the firehouse you would have to coordinate the schedule based on any of the rental events so you know it would be a situation where if they have an event on a Friday evening and then need to turn it over for a Saturday luncheon uh, you'd have to have an individual who's got a flexible enough schedule to be able to say okay I can I can do it and some of the events on a Friday night aren't, aren't wrapping up until 11 o'clock, um, so it, it, we're just going to have to make sure that the individual's got that flexibility, that they're going to be cleaning the uh, facility around the events as opposed to at their, at their convenience. And, and then the, the other issue is going to be is, is that, you know, what are, we, what are we paying for a dollar? Tim, do you know what we pay for, can we look it up and see what Jackie was making before? We can look it up. Yeah, it's whatever part time, ten something, I remember it was. I can confirm that. Okay, yeah, confirm that. Yeah. What is the lowest cost Jackie Cowan, C O W A N. Okay, thanks. Can Cowan? Yes. Or Phillips, it might be under Phillips. Okay. All right. Can I ask something? Sure. The um, Amy Riley, would she not be willing to clean Lighthouse Hall, or she can't do both? Well, the thing was, um, we were trying to split it up. Um, only because we know what kind of job Jackie did. I mean, you would walk in Lighthouse Hall and all you smelled was bleach. You knew it was yeah, bleach. You wiped cabinets down, counters down. They didn't have ants, they didn't have roaches, they didn't have anything. I don't know if anybody remembers when Jackie was cleaning. I mean, as soon as you opened that door, you, all you smelled was bleach. She did a great job. She knew what she was doing. I just don't have her schedule right now. I just spoke to her. She's pretty busy. I would love to see her do it. I guess you can reach out to Rico. I did ask uh, Amy Riley to put in an application, 
Yeah. Okay. For both, Dave, or just for one? Um, I did speak. Uh, well, it was just for the one at the, at the time, and that was the uh, the hall, the, the new firehouse hall. Um, you know, I spoke briefly with her about the uh, lighthouse hall, and uh, I told her somebody would contact her and do an interview. Jack can't do it. Nice. Nice. Uh, any applications we have there. You're also going to have to do the ones if we can. You should get together with Dave. You're looking at her, not Dave, right? Because it's admin, admin and rec, so right. two of them are going to have to get together and go over the uh, applications yeah. they have for who's going to run the summer camp and who's working summer camp. The summer camp is it's coming she, up. So. She, has, um, she has a bunch of applications, so... Yeah, we'll come up one day. Just let me know what it looks like. Okay. Thanks, guys. Short hair. What are you What are you looking at? Uh, you know. Uh, what am I looking at? Yeah, in terms of number, in terms of the number of hours. Well, wait, hey, the new firehouse is going to. <coughs> like you said, it's going to depend on. It's going to be the event dependent. Right, event dependent. <coughs> um, how many nights are? Do they have something going on at the Lighthouse Hall? I know that there's softball going on, so the outdoor outside bathrooms need to be cleaned. I don't think they're, or did they fix those yet? Outside bathrooms are fixed. Okay. Last week I knew they were using inside. So. And we also have to get the, the repairs done. We need new toilets in there. We need, is the fan going in? The fan, yeah, I asked uh, at the budget time in uh, November for the fan, and I got the green light for it. Because that's what uh, we were talking about with the refrigerator. As long as the refrigerator is running, it blows out hot air. And then the hot air tells the refrigerator, hey, it's hot. And then it runs again and it just it burns some odors up on them. Will the refrigerator fixed? Yes, the refrigerator is fixed. The freezer is okay. We, we don't get an exhaust. Freezer down the new firehouse is okay? Yes. It's turned off. What, the freezer down the new firehouse? Yeah, so why it was. Uh, I told you it was turned off. <coughs> no. electric. Right, but the um, <coughs> the ice maker was, I think when your event was there, it was, wasn't yeah, giving you. It was coming out and, and she collapsed like it wasn't broken up. The gentleman who fixed the soda box at the recreate at the lighthouse hall went down and made an adjustment to the to the uh, ice Sorry. maker, and he, he adjusted the setting so that it's not freezing as solid as what you had experienced. It's now has the, when, it, when the ice comes out, the impact of it hitting the other ice breaks it into the chunks. That, so that that is taken care of. Okay, thank you. We need to make a motion to hire somebody, I guess. It's, it, 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 I would, I would. Well, before we make the motion, you have to check with Jackie and we have to, that's Bo and Dave have to get together. Yeah, but would, the, it would give us at least give us authorization to put somebody on the payroll. All right, I make a motion to be able to hire a person to clean the new firehouse hall and a person to clean uh, lighthouse hall. Office Second there. Motion to hire a individual or individuals plural uh, to clean both the Joe Hughes Memorial Hall. As well as Lighthouse <coughs> Hall. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Tim, if you could take a look at you know what the rate was the last time we had a cleaning service in there. Yeah. Um, sure. Dave, Karen, and Despo, if you could look at potential candidates okay. through recreation as well as uh, admin, and <coughs> we could uh, move forward with making sure that <coughs> the facility is clean for any type of events that we have uh, for the banquet hall. Any other action items for council this evening? Uh, just a reminder of the public upcoming events. Um, next Saturday, the 17th at 12 noon, is the parade and housing ceremony for the Eddystone Fire Department.
Mayor Reeves, you want to give a little bit of an explanation of the events that yes. are scheduled? Um, the the, the uh, housing and parade will be uh, will begin at um, 12 noon. Uh, the lineup is behind the uh, shock break and it'll be going through the uh, <coughs> through the streets of Eddystone. Ended up uh, going down 8th Street and behind the firehouse and pulling out to the front where the uh, reviewing stand will be. After the parade's over, the, the trucks, once they pass the reviewing stand, the other trucks besides ASTO will park down into the uh, parking lot of uh, Community Transit. And there will be uh, light refreshments served and uh, shirts for sale and mugs for sale. Shirts and mugs? Yes. And the housing is dedicating with, with two pieces of equipment? Uh, the, the ambulance and the uh, QRC. I know at the workshop meeting we had some discussions back and forth about the next recreation board meeting. Is it actually going to be on the 20th? Or, yes. Okay. We're going to have one tomorrow night. It's just, it's not a meeting. It's more of a sit down and organize for more more of that. Okay. But the regular meeting. Regular, yeah. regular rec board meeting is going to be Tuesday the 20th at 7 o'clock at Lighthouse Hall. Correct. Friday the 23rd of May at 6 o'clock, we encourage everybody to gather um, at the Borough Hall and uh, have a ride along with the return of the bike patrol. Can I show the shirt? Sure. These are the new uniforms. Bike patrol. Yay. Are those for sale too? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Patterson, I caught myself uh, before we published the meeting minutes. It's uh, I did change the date to Sunday the 25th for the Memorial Day Parade, picnic, and fireworks display. How are the plans coming along, sir? Very well. And Mr. Neary had left, but we do have a meeting at the uh, Wednesday the 4th of June. At 6 o'clock is the police and emergency management, and at 7 o'clock that same evening will be the highway and sanitation meeting, and one of the major topics of discussion at the highway and sanitation meeting is actually an upgrade or a renewal of a lot of the signs that are faded throughout the borough, as well as taking a look at the uh, striping, because uh, we typically will repaint all of the pavement markings during the summer months, so I want to be able to make sure we're giving clear direction. Uh, to Gene when he goes out and does his striping. Are you sure they had a spell? Yeah, no, not on. Yeah. Depends on which way you're looking at it. <laughs> Across the street from my house, which goes this way, has on. <laughs> Council, any events that's missing off of the list that you want to bring up at this time? We do have the community cleanup. For Sunday at 9 a.m. at 9th in Seville. Uh, anyone who wants to volunteer there, volunteer, just meet there at 9 o'clock. Um, that is the 18th, yes, at 9 o'clock. The day after your parade. You do know that we're all um, the um, Methodist Church is supposed to. Bill? Yes. You got a letter from the church about the church service on the 18th at 10. I already said I can't make it. Well, normally I do it on my Saturday, but your parade not fine. <laughs> I always do it the week before so Memorial Day weekend. So I got bumped. Can't even get lunch now. <laughs> Mayor, as I'm looking at the mess of a desk. That was a uh, an invite that we got from the Methodist Church to attend a um, Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, recognizing folks that are in public service. Public service. You got it. The 18th, yes. I'll be doing that service. We'll recognize you, I'll come check on the cleanup after All right, there you go. Now, on the same note, um, that Sunday, when we leave the gates open at the uh, highway department so we can take the trash in and 
um, the, the rear end of the trash truck. Yeah, I'll have Gene loaded. pull the truck in as opposed to back it in, so that Thank way you've you. got access to the back of the truck for Memorial Day, um, the, the 25th, that Sunday when we're having all the events. Can we set the uh, time back back in the morning? for the cars to be moved off the street so it gives Gina a chance to uh, hit the streets with the uh, sweeper machine. What are you looking at, 11 a.m.? Uh, no, the parade starts at uh, 12. Um, I'm looking at like 8 or 9 in the morning. 9 a.m.? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And one last thing. Yes, sir. The flowers for the monument. How are we doing? It? I know. I've we talked about it a couple times. I've got a. I received a text message from the ladies auxiliary at the firehouse. They have some flowers that were uh, left over from their Mother's Day sale. Um, we as a borough are going to purchase those flowers, and that's what's going to be used at the monument. And the ladies auxiliary was kind enough to say that if we purchase the flowers at cost. They would be willing to dig the hole and put it in there. <laughs> General updates, the website development update. Uh, we actually met with Hall Communications, who is our uh, vendor doing the website. Uh, the logo development is underway. Uh, Jennifer had brought some homepage templates and finalized the, the site map. Uh, so we started as a council to uh, give the homework assignments on who's responsible for writing copy about uh, certain issues and events in the borough. Uh, beginning immediately, we're going to start sending photos and copy content to Hoff uh, and hopes that the site would be uh, essentially complete by the early July, uh, we'll begin site testing, proofreading, and the target date for the launch of the new website is the 14th of July, 2014, which will be the same night of our July council meeting. So we'll uh, certainly set up the projector and uh, get plugged into the internet and give a little tour of our new borough website. The 14th of May, is the Senior Awards Program at Ridley High School. Uh, I will leave the names blank since the event has not passed, but I did want to uh, make sure that everybody understood that uh, Borough Council and uh, the community does sponsor several awards uh, that we give to high school seniors living here in the borough. The Susan Cowan DiMatteo Memorial for $200 will be awarded that night. The Joe Hughes Memorial in the amount of $100 would be awarded. The Biddy Basketball for $100. The Eddie Stone Homecoming for $100. And the Eddie Stone Business Association's award for $100. So uh, it's our opportunity as a community to recognize uh, some of the seniors that live here in Eddie Stone. What time was it on Saturday morning at uh, the 3rd of May that the first rail car <laughs> came in from the Eddie Stone Rail Company? 1.30, Bill. Time to get up. I'll repeat this. I'll repeat. Shake clock, Dave. <laughs> I'll repeat the same story that we shared at the workshop meeting was is that with a little bit of arm twisting, I convinced Councilwoman Reeves that it would be a good idea to go down and uh, welcome the first rail car coming in for the new crude by rail facility at Eddie Stone Rail Company. Give me one minute. I do have to say, it did bring me a couple of calls. <laughs> the, uh, the deal was that the car was supposed to come in around 12.30, and I promised that we would leave by 1 o'clock. Uh, those that are familiar with the operations of the rail company, uh, it is a big, giant loop. So basically when it comes into the facility, the front of the train eventually meets the back of the train like a snake, and you're trapped in the circle until they unhook all the cars. So even though the train was there by 1 o'clock, the racking of the cars did not complete until about 3 a.m. 
and that was when it was time that he had an opening <laughs> through the tracks to, to leave there. <laughs> May have and, to blame Septa for <laughs> Yeah, we could blame Septa. Right. The, uh, the last thing that I have is, is I did want to make sure that I, on the record, submitted invoices uh, to our solicitor, Mr. Duffy. Uh, these are invoices from Coco's Container Service. Uh, Coco's provided the dumpster service for the abatement that we recently performed, and uh, that should be added along with the services from ADU to do the boarding of the property uh, when we go and actually do the process of putting a, a borough lien. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that you had those in your possession. And I'll have to make a copy because that's the only copy, so we're going to end up having to cut a check as well. Roundtable discussion. I'll start with Councilwoman Thompson. Uh, I have two things. Uh, I first wanted to thank everyone who participated in the cancer walk. Uh, we had about 250 people, and we raised close to $2,000. Um, thank you to the police department and the fire department uh, for their assistance. And I wanted to thank you personally for your assistance and uh, your support with the walk. Um, also, uh, thank you to Councilman Patterson and his wife, Danby, for your contribution. And uh, thanks to all who participated in the uh, drug prevention poster contest. Uh, thank you to all council your support. I truly appreciated it and I was touched when you thanked me tonight, so thank you. That's it. Councilwoman Tadashiro. Uh, just uh, I'd like to thank Gabe Noel for coming up again and speaking to everybody for, um, for the uh, recycle program. He did a wonderful job and I know he's going to have a lot more people recycling and he's going to get his badge. And the other thing is I would like to congratulate all the kids again who, who participated in the uh, poster contest. I thought that was a wonderful thing. That's it. Vice President Reese. Um, Gabe, good luck on Thank you for taking this task on. Yeah, we were thinking about hanging out at the memorial services and kind of... Does anyone want to learn about recycling? <laughs> you take every opportunity you can to interact with the community. And um, and also, um, uh, ladies' auxiliary, you guys did okay on your fun, your flowers. Good. Councilman Patterson. <laughs> um, Gabe, I think that's a great thing that you're doing with the recycling. And if you need any help, just let us know. Um, yeah, give your mom our my number and email address. Uh, that way, you know, if there's anything I can help you with, move along. Uh, Danielle, great job again with the uh, posters tonight, getting that all together and making it happen. Uh, and the ladies' auxiliary, I, I, you're going to plant the flowers, I love it. <laughs> so, that's all I have. Thanks. Everybody enjoy your memorial. We're going to put it in reverse for 30 seconds because Karen remembers what you what you missed. Uh, yes. Go ahead, Karen. Next month, um, Kyle Gross, who is our senior <coughs> council person, um, I imagine next month will be his last council meeting. Hopefully, we'll, we can get him here. But I would like to, um, last year I went out and bought Cassandra, two years ago, I'm sorry, went out and bought Cassandra a gift. And we also gave them, I believe, a $100 check. Mm -hmm. I would like to do the same for Kyle. I'll go out and purchase him a gift and... We can present him with this next week, or next month, rather. What is the gift, Karen? Um, we got Cassandra a globe, a snow globe that had a lighthouse in the oh, center of it. I cute. talked to Cassandra and said, How do you, you know, what do you think of it for a boy? And she's like, Oh, we'll love it. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Any suggestions? <laughs> you think that's, you think it'll be all right? Yeah. 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 It's a perfect. Right. Tell us what's down Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'd like to bring to the attention of our council that um, uh, Paul Green, one of our part-timers, did uh, uh, submit his uh, resignation uh, effective uh, today. Uh, he gave it to me two weeks ago. Um, advised me that he uh, has received a full-time job with Septic Police. And I would like to uh, Paul was with us for a little over two years. I'd like to see council give him uh, some type of resolution. If all possible. Um, also, Gabe, I want to thank you for the job you did tonight. You did a very nice job. If you need help, you get a hold of me. I'd be more than happy to help you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Chief Petrucci. Hey, Gabe, I'd like to say thank you for uh, what you're doing for our community. And I would tell you, you did a great job speaking in public. There's a lot of people. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the parade, I just want to remind residents that we will set um, uh, we will set signs up the Wednesday before each event. Uh, parking will be restricted on Seville Avenue from 9th Street up to Chester Pike and 8th Street, so uh, residents can enjoy the parade and uh, trucks can navigate through the town safely. And the flyer out to the school so your children may come home uh, with the flyers. Take back initiative that we did last month was successful. Uh, we made 11.2 pounds of prescription drugs that were collected at the Lighthouse Hall. Uh, the year before that, we collected a little over seven pounds. So we are improving. We're getting the drugs out of our out of our households. I'm working uh, with the DA and with Borough Council's approval. I'd like to put a permanent drop box in the lobby of the Borough Hall, so residents will have access Monday through Friday, eight to four, uh, to discard any unused prescriptions. And um, sure. Um, Ed, I don't know. Like I've seen in other towns in the past. Um, like when I was younger, I could take my bike up and they could do a serial number thing on it and write a card. That way, if the bike got stolen, the police department would know. Um, there's a child down the street from me. His bike got stolen. They know who stole it, but he has no documentation saying that he owned the bike. We were just wondering. We were uh, going to try to do some type of uh, item like that. I remember when I was a kid, we used to do that. We used to sit down at the uh, football field and have a little basketball court down there. And we, didn't, we weren't able to get that together for this event, but it is something I'd like to work on. Uh, for I'll time. help you with it. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. Thank you, sir. I have a bicycle questions. Uh, first, Gabe, thank you very much uh, for your efforts uh, to promote the recycling program. It's something that's very important uh, to the Borough of Eddystone and uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of success and uh, increased participation. Uh, you did a wonderful job uh, with your public speaking, you. uh, something your mother should be very proud of, and uh, we invite you back uh, next month uh, for our June Council meeting uh, so you can give us an update on your progress. Okay. Dan Danielle, uh, great work with the poster contest, uh, you know, it's the, the one-two punch. You brought the uh, cancer walk uh, to the forefront uh, at the end of last month, and uh, the poster contest is, a, is another success, and it's just a demonstration of, you know, us as a community all working uh, together. Once, I uh, wanted to give some congratulations out to uh, Beth Gross. Uh, she's absent this evening so that she could welcome in the birth of uh, another grandchild, and. It was reported earlier that uh, baby Michael and, and mom are doing very well, so uh, certainly want to pass along those congratulations uh, to Beth on the, on the birth of her grandbaby. And also, uh, Mayor Reeves and I had the opportunity, it was last Friday, to uh, attend a luncheon uh, down at the Liberty Electric. Um, the plant manager, John Kalarik, and his team of uh, safety managers uh, were officially recognized with the Governor's Safety Award for Excellence. Uh, they've uh, operated that plan, I believe it was 19 employees uh, that he mentioned, and they have gone over 12 years without a job loss incident, so they should be commended for their safe operations down at the uh, Eddystone uh, Liberty Electric Plant, and uh, we certainly thank them that they thought of Borough Council to, to pass along the invite to, to share uh, in the receipt of their award. Thank you. Sure. How many do they employ down there? 19. 19. It was less than 150 
other companies in this state that have received that dollar award. Hmm. There's less than? Less than 150 other companies that have received that award in the last 30 years. Wow. Council, any other action before we adjourn? May I have a motion to adjourn, please? So, so we'll say one thing. I just want to say thank you to Council. You really made me proud tonight working together. Uh, everything that you are accomplishing is what it takes by working together and appreciating what other council members are doing for the community. So I just want to say good job, and I am so glad we're bringing the rank back into the police department here. We need it. Thank you. Thank you. We've wanted it for years, Kathy. <laughs> Meeting adjourned.